Hello everyone, my name is Rochelle Innocent and I'm the founder and CEO of Project Purpose. Welcome to our channel. Our community is focused on fostering the intellectual and character development in children. We do this through our parent-child workshops that are focused on four themes, autonomy, self-efficacy, compassion, and self-concept, in order to cultivate grit, perseverance, and resilience in each child. And we are so thrilled to be offering one of the first of its kind digital, virtual, and continuous learning environments, enabling parents and children to connect from all around the world. Our project purpose are over arching mandate is to renew and rebuild family, community, and relationships. Our different social media platforms provide us with an opportunity to have discussions and to create space for all topics that relate to family, community, and relationships with ourselves as well as with others with a primary focus on mental health and education. More precisely, the ways that the institutions of mental health and education play a role and have played a role in our societies at large. These discussions and debates provide us with an opportunity to think critically about what needs to change within these structures for us to live up to our bold slogan, support, protect, and empower each child through youth-focused development. Better known as leadership in juvenescence, we recognize that in valuing our children's leadership potential, this also translates as recreating and co-creating environments, both socially and politically, that will enable our children to thrive. For those of you who are particularly keen on the topic, we we also write thought pieces every other Monday. We have a thought piece scheduled to drop this upcoming Monday, so definitely be sure to meander over to the website and check out our online content. Now, if it is the case that you are looking for a listening alternative, well, we're available wherever podcasts are playing, and we've provided you with access to a few links down below. Now, as is the convention, be sure to subscribe, hit that post notification bell so that you are aware of every time we post. And of course, if you like these conversations and you want to keep them going. Like, comment, and share this segment. Let's get into it. Allo les mecs et les mecs. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another segment here on Project Purpose. For those of you who are new, we cover topics that relate to mental health, mental wellness, and education on a week by week basis. And today's topic of discussion is mental wellness and the conversation around mental wellness. I want to talk about living and let living. So to live and to let live. I want to have a conversation because that is my life philosophy. I am at my root a relativist. In fact, I recognize I was a relativist when I took a philosophy course in my undergraduate studies, logical positivism that I absolutely adored and it changed my perspective on a lot of different things because I do believe that life is very much relative. It's relative to our experiences, it's relative to our purpose, to our passion. I mean, there's so many things that play into our becoming that are so specific to our journey that it's important that we recognize that we're all on very individual paths and the best way that we can connect and synergize rather than conflict and butt heads is to live and let live is to recognize that all of us our own lives and the choices that we make are going to create opportunities for reflection for growth and to correct and self-correct some of the beliefs and some of the values and some of the patterns of thinking as they translate in the interaction and the cause and effect and the relay between us and our environment and so because I believe in that fundamentally I can live and let live I don't need people to have the same beliefs the same values the same attitudes as I do for me to find synergy with them when I think like-minded individuals. I think individuals who are focused more or less on growth, on growing, on discovery, but in all of the different ways that that translates. And it's not to say that I don't find synergy with people who aren't necessarily focalized on growth. It's really just recognizing that to each their own. And I find that there are so many people who have such a hard time embodying that. I want to give you the value proposition for why it's something that benefits you in your mental well-being. And so the first one is recognize that interference is very rarely necessary. When I live and let live, I very rarely feel inclined to interfere in the lives and in the situations that are happening around me that are a byproduct of other people's choices and other people who are living in their own translation of living and let living. And so the only way and only time that you'll ever see me interfere is if I'm being confronted with a situation that is in a direct conflict with my fundamental beliefs. And so my fundamental beliefs are around abuse. I have very, very fundamental beliefs that 
that will create a visceral response if it is the case that I'm wrecking. I'm seeing abuse of elderly people, of children, or of animals because I so fundamentally believe in the wrongness of that, in the hurt and harm of vulnerable persons and beings, I will rise to the occasion and, and interfere. But other than that, if someone's communicating a belief that I disagree with, I can have a conversation about that without trying to challenge their beliefs or trying to belittle or to have them come over to my side. I think that it's just really important that we recognize that we only gain by being in environments where people have different perspectives, different beliefs, and it gives us something to think about. It gives us something to ponder. And so secondly, this is one is really important is about comparison. I do not live from a place of comparison and I find that we become very intolerant to the beliefs of others and to the differences of others if we seek validation and sameness. And so a lot of us, the way that we feel worthy, the way that we feel like we're okay and that we're measuring up is by comparison, is by being as closely aligned to the people who are beside us, which means we are really focused on shrinking back as much as possible. We don't want to stand out. We don't want to have aspects of our personality be different. We really want to just hold hold the line. And so because we do so much suffocating of our own individuality to hold the line, because we value being seen as similar and as the same, and we have sacrificed many parts of ourselves to do that, we are the ones who find ourselves to be very intolerant and very resistant to difference. And that's only because we haven't given ourselves permission to be different. We have been our own worst critics for all of the ways that we know ourselves to be different that we wouldn't dare share with the people around us. And oftentimes that is a byproduct of the judgment and the shame and of the consequences of those differences in the environments that we grew up in and we thought to change ourselves rather than change our environment and I hope that for those of you who have found yourselves in a place where you're trying to blend in as much as possible you are doing your best to wallflower it through life that it is not you that needs to change but maybe it's a signal that your environment needs to change so find yourself in an environment that embraces your individuality allows your individuality to bloom and to blossom and lastly one of the great tenets of living and let living is it gives you more insight into yourself. When you allow yourself to remove the judgmental lens and to look at the world around you as it is without trying to make it what you think it should be, you start to think about the things that you think that it should be with a more critical lens. So that critical eye, rather than it being on the external, it goes internal. And when it goes internal, then you're always checking your values, your beliefs, your attitudes, your thought patterns, and always finding little ways to adjust and to modify without life making you do it. And I'm a huge proponent for proactivity. Prevention is better than cure and when life hands out experiences, life experiences to change or to change us, they can be really very debilitating and while there's no way to avoid what life has planned for us per se, I think that we can get ahead of it by being open and being receptive and having that wonder, right? And a lot of us lose the wonder and I think wonder is just such an important human attribute where we can just think about the things that are taking place around us and how that influences the world that exists within us and I think that so little of us take the time to evaluate our inner life and the thoughts that we entertain and why we entertain those thoughts specifically and maybe what thoughts we might want to entertain and how we can do that pivot by changing the ways that we interact in the world around us. I mean there's just so much life that happens internal to us that we allow to go untapped because we're so focused on what's happening around us and when you live and let live you're less concerned about what's happening around you other than what you know plays into your fundamental values and beliefs that you'll stand up and take a position on and you're just much more concerned about what's happening within you, the world within you and how you're nourishing that place of inner growth, inner development, inner actualization and self-love, self-discovery and self-healing. So that's what I want to come in here and talk about some of the benefits of living and let living to live and let live, recognizing that life is relative. All of us are going to find ourselves going through different beliefs, values, attitudes throughout our lives based on the experiences that we have and because all of us have such varying experiences better to benefit from that variance rather than find ourselves uncomfortable with difference. So thank you so much for tuning in. That was my food for thought for you today. As it relates to my stocking situation, no updates for you as yet, but you'll be the first to know when I do. Thank you so much again and we'll talk to you soon.